Vida longa e próspera a todos. Dr. Norman Bergram é um velhinho de mais de 90 anos. Quando ele fez essa entrevista, ele tinha 91, foi em 2012. Então eu procurei se esse cara ainda está vivo, mas como eu só vejo vídeos antigos, talvez ele não esteja. Então, muito respeito com a pessoa dele. Queria dizer que pela minha análise, eu não vejo nenhum motivo de qual ele estaria mentindo, tá? Então assim, é um cara que está no fim da sua vida, tudo que ele quer é passar as informações do qual ele colheu durante sua vida inteira. Então, diferente de uma pessoa jovem, que teria algo para ganhar com uma mentira ou algo assim, tudo que ele está falando é sobre coisas que ele viu, ok? São, não são teorias, como ele mesmo fala, são coisas que ele observou e está passando para nós. Ele não tem consciência que nós temos como a Terra ser plana e esses objetos estarem muito próximos. Saibam que ele tem a consciência dele, ele só está vendo aquilo que ele vê, só que ele não sabe interpretar da mesma maneira que nós podemos. Então eu peço que vocês, primeiro, saibam disso. Segundo, saibam que nós não sabemos nada sobre o que está lá em cima. Eu sei que você deve ter algum conhecimento escritural, eu sei que você deve observar pessoalmente, mas se a Terra é plana, isso implica que não só nós não conhecemos o planeta em que vivemos, o mundo, ou habitar, como você chame, mas lá fora também nós não conhecemos nada, muito menos do que aqui. Então, primeiro, saibam que ele não teria por que estar mentindo. Segundo, a gente não sabe o que tem lá em cima. Então, vamos analisar sem nenhum paradigma o que a gente vai ver agora, tá? E tentem entender o que, que é isso que a gente está vendo. É possível que esses anéis que estão construindo em Saturno sejam eletromagnéticos de alguma maneira, sejam utilizados para alguma função, tá? E nós, como observadores, temos que entender esses fenômenos. Norman foi um cientista engenheiro. Então, como eu digo, se você não é um engenheiro e você não é um cientista, você é um mero umpa-lumpa de os iluminados, ok? Que trabalha num nível de capacidade tão secreta que é acima do presidente, para uma empresa chamada Lockheed. Então, espera aí. Olha o que eu acabei de falar. Você deve ser o pica das galáxias, entende tudo de conspiração há 10 anos, sabe tudo sobre o World Trade Center, sobre o homem não ter ido na Lua, mas após que na sua vida você nunca ouviu falar sobre Lockheed. Foi, ela foi priori a NACA, que foi a precursora da NASA, então, muito antes da NASA existir, esse cara já estava lá trabalhando. Então, o um cara totalmente ancião, tem um respeito pela pessoa dele e tentem filtrar para o seu conhecimento de vocês. Eu tenho certeza que tem algo aqui que é muito importante para nós. Além disso, ele vai falar da boca dele por que a NASA mente, ok? E que a NASA mente. Então, não tem um cara mais... Importante que Norman Bergram para dizer que a NASA mente para vocês, ok? Vamos ao vídeo em questão então. And I had Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 data. And that I inspected and studied for quite a while. And that's when I wrote the first book. And I was so surprised at what I found that it took me like the four years to to get the book published because I wasn't sure that what I had was really right. And so I looked in many articles and books to see, oh yeah, this sort of fits what they're talking about there. Okay, you're okay, so publish it. And uh, so the book came out in 1985. Okay, and that's the Ringmakers. That's the Ringmakers. But the other one, this one. That's 1971. I had left... Lockheed. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Well, did we build it? Pardon? Do you, did we build it? Did, did, who built it, the craft? I don't know who built it, but uh, it, what I found out is these things inhabit Saturn. That's, that's where I first discovered them. And they're proliferating. They're now... Uranus and, uh, and Jupiter, wherever you see some rings now, why, that's one of these. You see the craft. Yeah, I call it a ring maker. 
Yeah. Okay, you call you call it a ring maker. Yeah, and I can say it's electromagnetic because I can identify uh, streamlining patterns with respect to it that I knew were what we call potential lines, and um, and that that says it was electrical. When I worked at Lockheed, I had documents that were indeed top secret. Really? Wow. Oh yeah. And then uh, I went for, through. I went through the first generation of the Polaris Southern Water launch vehicle, and then I got tapped to go behind closed doors. Oh, you did. Yeah, and I was there for until uh, I got claustrophobia. Three doors to get to your. Yeah, I had to sign my life away for thirty years. Wow. Is it still in effect right now? No. No? So could you tell me anything? No. You can't? Mm -mm. Why? What would happen? Uh, I'd prefer not to find out. I might have seen some craft in those hangars. Is that right? Uh, it was my first clue that there was something in space that was different. Okay. I was handed one day a set of data, the guy that gave it to me said, nobody else around here has ever been able to get anything out of these data, and if anybody can, you can. And so I went through it, and I found this one spot of data that really looked interesting. And I slugged through plotting it up. It was quite a difficult test to, to uh, to draw the the picture of that, mm -hmm. and when I got it, um, you could tell it was something strange. I didn't at that time. Um, I I have seen one on the ground in Antarctica. You have, not personally, uh -huh. but an image of one I, which I wish I had cut out. Right. Um, so no, the, these things can come in real low. Yeah. Um, they're all sizes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same deal as airplanes. You know, the cubs and, and all that kind of. You know. Right, and so the, when you're talking about the craft in the rings of Saturn, you're talking about something huge, right? Yes. Much bigger than than we could even conceive of. I understand. Um, what is it? I, I don't know. What, was it seventy thousand yeah. square feet? Um, I could, in looking down on the rings, I could see parallel lines crossing the ring, all the rings at once. Mm -hmm. That's about as long as you can get them. That's incredible. But I, I could tell that those lines demarked the outside of an object. Mm -hmm. You're, are you sort of saying, when you say you got claustrophobia, I don't know what that means, do you mean that you became sort of tired of working at, uh, in this above top secret area? Yeah, and no, I'm not tired, um, and it was very exciting. I got to see everything that went on all over the world. Wow. Nothing much has changed. Yeah? yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Um, or were you threatened? Were you, you know, what did, what did you, what what did you have friends who were leaving the employee of uh, of Lockheed at that time? I and mean, was there some incident that happened that made you want to leave? No, uh, it wasn't that. Uh, let's just say that you're confined to one room, day after day, year after year, same walls, so oh. forth. That's claustrophobia. I see. Uh, but I knew that, hey, there's something going on out there. And, and see if you can't, can't find it. Okay, but have you heard that NASA alters their, their footage coming from the moon, etc.? I, I know some of the things they do with it, yeah. Okay, so even their footage is not always dependable, right? 
although I guess it's dependable to begin with. It's just that they start altering it later. Um, I have been told by a very reliable source. He asked me what uh, what camera did I get that image from on the moon. I said Hasselblad, and he said that's right. Um, he he says uh, I thought we darkened that enough to that you wouldn't find it. Fine. Oh yes, so you were finding things that they didn't they thought they covered up. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. That must have been a lot of fun. And this guy says, Well, I suppose you want me to go out and tell everybody about that. I said, No, I don't want to embarrass you. That doesn't make any difference to me. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. I'm just saying I found what you saw. We're able to, you know, sort of look at and, and keep in sort of pristine condition? I'll tell you, at this juncture, I don't know what I have. I finally went to put it in a vault that the people claim hey, you, nobody can get in here, including the government. Um, but unfortunately, somehow, somebody did. Oh, really? Yeah. And what they do, is like I had some of them on a laptop, some of them just on disks and so forth, they garble it. They run it through something and they garble it. So it's no longer... And sometimes there's just nothing on there. And I know that there should be something, and there's nothing. So um, I don't know how much of the early stuff I can put together. Uh, what I do know is... I can put together it any time. Okay, so I, I don't need what? that old stuff you can tell people. Really? You know, I don't need it. Because you know, you're, you're familiar with the landscapes, you know where things are. I know where, yeah, I'm familiar with the landscape, I know, uh, I know pretty much what's going on. Um, it's sort of simple. Uh, on, on the Right. And okay. And this is this is the ring, right? This part, this is the ring. It, it, that ends up being the ring. Yeah. It's, it's and there are plasma. Oh, really? Okay. So, and they're what your theory is? They're man manufacturing it. Is that correct? It comes. That's that's the exhaust from this thing. From the craft? Yes. Is it because, are they stationary or are they moving, the craft? They're kind of moving. Mm -hmm. So do you think, when you say things are getting critical, are you okay, saying... Okay, uh, just take that picture and say that's the exhaust. It's like you have an airplane with an exhaust. Mm -hmm. It's in your atmosphere. And it can load a lot of energy, you know. And uh, um, but this is Saturn, like John Lear said. You know, Saturn is the, is the focal point, and I can't agree with him more. Okay, but John Lear talks about Saturn actually being portal into another dimension. Well, you know, I. He's theorizing. Yeah. So you don't necessarily go there. I, I don't go that way. Uh -huh. I, I either say, this is the way it is, or I, I can attack it. Okay, but you're saying things are getting critical because I'm really curious. Are you saying that those craft are coming here? Is that why it's critical? No, I'm saying, in, in effect, if they do, and there's a good probability that that is possible, uh -huh. then, hey, you've got to get with it. You can't wait around. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you see, no one really in this country accepts the concept 
that that Saturn, those things are there. Right. As you can't do it at Saturn, where else? You know, the, you just can't find it. It, it. People have got to be made to understand that those things are real. Right. You know, there's a movie out called Prome Prometheus, right? Uh, I can't say that I do. You don't know that. Well, there is one. Um, and I talked to Richard Hoagland. He said Prometheus is, well, first of all, there's a moon in Saturn called Prometheus, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm told that there's some kind of interaction between that moon and the rings. Well, sure. There's no question about it. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with him. And there's some... And you say there's something going on now. It's it's, it's becoming critical. Is is how you're terming it? Yeah, it's uh, it's much more prevalent than what we saw in 1985 or a little earlier. Um, Meaning, there's more activity on Saturn. Do you think, or just more activity around this? question about the rings and the and the craft in the rings. Well, there's actual activity. There is. Uh, you know, to start off with, Uranus, which is one of the other planets, um, did not have rings. That's right. But now it does. That's right. See? And so that kind of thing is going on. And we really ought to get to the root of it. Okay, do you have a theory on why Uranus suddenly has rings? Well, sure, it's the exhaust just like uh, So that, that's how I think the attention is being obtained. And um, so well, I, I would expect something to happen. You would? Yes. When you say something to happen, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that Stanford Let's say, well, let's look into what Norm's doing. As far as my own professional organization is concerned, uh, it does not fit at all with, with their objectives. Uh, it, How is it different? It's too controversial. Your, two con your, your theories, you mean? Now look, this is not a theory when when there's data. If I propose right. something, that that is a theory. Okay, so your your data or your yeah. conclusions? Yes, conclusions. Your conclusions yeah. are too controversial, is yes. what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, um, they don't want to uh, to get involved in that. But uh, if there, as you say, there are new rings around Uranus. And there's other activity on other planets too, isn't there? In the solar Jupiter. system, Jupiter. And what's happening with Jupiter? It's getting rings. It's getting rings. Okay. And are you seeing are you seeing craft there as well? Vehicles, as you call them. I haven't identified craft, but I can tell you that where there's rings, there are <laughs> these things. So. So we have these ring makers, yeah. and they create tremendous energy. Yeah. Can you tell us more about what you think is going on there? You've got any ideas along those lines? Well, um, let's just take one that there was this, what do they call them, far lookers or these psychologists? Oh, remote viewers. Remote viewers, yes. right. That's what I'm I just did an interview uh, with somebody there. Uh, which one? I had heard that there was one that saw something out there in the rings, and they were mining the rings. That's true, yes. Okay. Uh, I think I read her book, and she couldn't see anything from the side, but when she looked from uh, the top down, why, that's when she saw things. I see. Um, I happen to have been able to uh, uncover what she saw. Really? Yeah. And what did you... I would say, I don't think they're mining the rings. I was, 
I think they're nursing from the rings. Oh, in other words, you think they're using the energy to power their craft. Yeah, they're, that's where new ones are getting their energy. New, oh, new vehicles are getting their energy? Yeah. Um, you know, you start out small, just like a baby, and then you get bigger. Oh, right, because you say that you believe they're, they're sort of like alive. Do you believe they're plasma vehicles, what's called a plasma vehicle? Have you heard that terminology? Well, I've never heard them called plasma vehicles, but um, I can understand why somebody might say that, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't make a big deal over that. Um, okay, I've heard that, that the vehicles out there use, the, they actually fly close to the sun and they they power themselves up on the sun, and then they go back uh, into I, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. I, I've noticed some go in there, um, and it means that they're capable of withstanding those high temperatures. Yes. And uh, so, uh, yeah, they could get pumped up really nicely. <laughs> so... Well, let me ask you, I mean, you know that NASA has been sort of a front organization. I call them a front organization for the secret space program. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about being front. Well, when you say, when I say front, I mean, if you have an organization that deals with the public, interfaces with the public, and also misleads the public on certain certain things by doctoring photos, by, you know, covering up certain things, by only releasing certain things. That's a front organization, isn't it? Okay, all right. I guess you're entitled to do that. Okay. Um, um, so if, if we were to look at the situation a little closer and, and find out who are the insider organizations, Certainly Lockheed would qualify. Do, would you say that the defense industry are all in the know? No. No? No. Mm -mm. Uh, Lockheed only recently has been getting images themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, having worked there, um, I don't think there'd be anybody that, would be capable of doing the kind of work I have been doing. They did come up with uh, something that they could do. It required the services of one of the gents that knew how to program the computer. And that was the advantage of the outfit. They, they said, I can, uh, it can handle any size computer that there is. And, okay, so the day came and uh, this fellow's name, the owner of the company, his name was Jack, and Jack called a fellow in and says, uh, no, I'm ready for you to program. Jack, uh, I'm going to have to think about that. Uh, can I tell you over in the morning what, what my decision is? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, think it over. Next day came, he says, Jack, I can't do it. Uh, I am an aerodynamic specialist, and if I do this other, I'd ruin that. It's a no-go. Oh, how interesting. Uh, yeah, that was his attitude. And you check around, and the good guys still have that attitude. Right, that they don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to be uh, sort of they, tarred they, They've chosen, you know, their route. Straight and narrow. Yeah, yeah you come along and deviate them. They, they That's can't pack it. very interesting. Um, uh, do you believe that we're communicating with them? Have you had any evidence of oh, that? Oh, no, no, no. No, we are not capable of doing that. Um, you know, SETI has tried to communicate with extraterrestrials and they haven't done it yet. They have chosen the type of person, the type of entity that they want to communicate with is somebody that knows how to build radios. <laughs> right. That constrains them in their thinking yes. immensely. Right. Okay.
there is one f uh, flight out to Saturn where uh, the instrument flew by the ring. And the idea was uh, to sense the plasma in there. It had a wide frequency range, and it turned out to be plasma. And so it took, and they knew the speed, and they knew the time it took to pass the ring, and so they knew how thick it was. Uh -huh. uh, and now that was a plasma indicator. Okay. So it has been measured that indeed there is plasma rain, mm -hmm. which you read also where, oh, this is a bunch of broken up moons that got there, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's confusion in their storytelling. Uh-huh. Um, but, the, but the rings that are suddenly appearing around Uranus, these are not broken up moons, right? Um, you know, all I can say is, you know, the rings are there, and my interpretation is, by inference, I see the rings, uh, so somewhere there's a need and lead. And they're never where you think they're going to be. ...of Saturn, and they've seen that there's a, a, a hexagonal yes. shape. Yes. You've heard of that? Yes. That seems to support your, your theory, or your, your conclusions, that that's what he said. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, the, any, any geometric form can be made. Um, okay. But you don't see anything, I mean, isn't there a significance to, to the hexagon in, in the Saturn symbology? Um, well, I would never expect a, a, a hexagon there, but... I had never expected to see some of the other things I've seen either, so I did want to visit uh, Saturn in the write-up I did because there are some things that uh, need to be fleshed out for people. But he told me, he told me that as an engineer, you really ought to get law under your belt because you know the nomenclature, and uh, these are the guys that are running the country, basically. Mm -hmm. And they really don't know about some things that they should, but they just do it. And um, so over a period of 10 years, I, had a lot, I got a law degree. Oh, you did? Wow, that's incredible. And. Uh, uh, On top of I everything it, else you were doing, you got a law degree. I, I found it uh, <laughs> just exactly like the prof said, yeah. And that, that's what made it so, so easy to go in. And to I, go otherwise, in. I wouldn't have done it.